I don't know why I did that. <laughs> That's a dance. Is that your dance? No. What was that? The kitty. <laughs> the kitty. <laughs> Was that what that was? I don't know. I was just happy and I now just, I'm not. I just do the grocery store. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on. Sir, I do click and collect. I don't go in the grocery store. Okay. <laughs> I'm being bullied. Don't say that. Okay, here we go. Hi, everybody. I'm Miss Jeanette. And I'm Mr. Matt. And welcome to our awesome announcements. I am so excited for today's announcements because I even brought my loaves and fishes Whoa. dollars. Why did you bring all those with you? Well, because next week is the loaves and fishes store. Ooh. So I need every single one I have. And at the end of the month, each campus has their own loaves and fishes store open for business. So gotta be ready. <laughs> that is so amazing. So what do we do at the Loaves and Fishes store? Well, that's where we can exchange our Loaves and Fishes dollars for mm -hmm. our different projects. You remember the garden seeds or yeah. the clean water wells we've done mm -hmm. or all the Bibles for Ukraine? All of those are available to buy at the Loaves and Fishes store. This is so cool. So how do, how do I help uh, on a project? Well, you can bring your Loaves and Fishes dollars to the store and you trade them in to help with whatever projects you pick. Some are worth only a couple loaves and fishes dollars. Well, some of them are worth a lot. So you can work together with a friend to buy the big ones or you can save up for them yourself. That is great. You know what? I have a few loaves and fishes dollars that I've been saving as well. <gasps> yeah, look at that! You know what? I would love, do you want to help me? Uh, buy some clean water for kids in Cambodia because between the two of us, yeah, I think we might have enough here. Let's do it. And you know what, you guys? Don't forget to go ahead and put your offering in right now. And if you want to give it uh, during the week, you can come to Central Campus and drop it off at reception and say it's for Miss Gianna. Now we have one more thing for you guys today. We have to do a pizza drop oh. because you guys handed in your challenge card. I love pizza. I'm so excited for you guys. So let's go get our hats. To the hats. Let's go. Hi guys, we have all our applicants for the pizza draw for May and we are ready to draw, right Mr. Matt? I'm so excited. Cool. Mm -hmm. We had three campuses bring us back challenge cards this month. So good job to Airdrie, Bears Paw, and Central. Woo! Yes, yes. If you're yes. from Bridgeland or South, make sure you get it in next time because if you're the only one, you'll win by default. Yes. So do it. All right, Mr. Matt, would you like to draw a winner for our Airdrie campus? I sure will. Ready? And... Oh. Who is it? Alyssa! Yay! Congratulations! Good job, Alyssa. All right, I'm gonna draw a winner for our Bears Paw Campus. Ready? Who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? I like this one. It is gonna be Samuel. Congratulations, Congratulations. to Samuel from Bears Paw. All right, and Mr. Matt, would you like to draw our central winner? Here we go. I'm so excited. Who is it? Zion. Congratulations! All right, guys, good job to our winners, to Alyssa, Samuel, and Zion. I will be calling and emailing you guys later this week to get in touch about dropping off a pizza for you guys. And congrats to everyone who tried. Make sure you get them in next time, too, so you can have a chance for the June draw, all mm -hmm. right? We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. I Show us remember. your biggest yawn. <sighs> okay, your turn. I don't want to. Do it! <laughs> no. Come on, yawn. No. <laughs> You know, this is how they carried sheep, <laughs> over their shoulders. Hi everyone, I'm Miss Tara. And I'm Josh. I'm so excited to see you all here today, since we're talking about one of my favorite topics in the Bible. Oh really? What's that? Well, I could tell you, or we could play a game. And I think we should play a game. A game? I love games. What kind of game are we playing? Well, for the last two weeks, we've learned some new words. Justification mm -hmm. and redemption. We have another new topic today, and so I'm going to give you some clues to help you figure out what we're learning. So, I'm kind of like a detective, I guess, eh? Exactly. Are you ready to play? Uh, for sure. Okay, here's your first clue. Can you unscramble the word? Let me try. Hmm. Uh, Tetris? No. Terrace? No. Certus? No. no! Uh, you have to unscramble okay. it. <laughs> Sister. Yes! Sister, great job. Sister is the first clue for you. Okay, next clue. Take a look at this. Playground. What do you think? Playground. Playground. No. Yeah. Two buddies. Yes. What, what are the two buddies? 
<laughs> um, they kind of look like twins, actually. Oh, close, but not quite. You're on the right track, though. Uh, okay. Uh, two boys in a playground. Maybe they're brothers. Yes! Good job. And here is your last clue. A pear and a bunch of bugs. You put the two pictures together and it gives you a new word. Try that. Okay. Pear bugs? No. Not pear bugs. Pear ants. No! I... Try again. Try again. Oh, wait. Pear yes! Parents! My bad. Parents! Yes! That is perfect. <laughs> Great job. Parents is the last clue. Now, put all your clues together and what do we have? Hmm. Sisters, brothers, parents. That equals a family! The answer's gotta be a family. You got it. Good job. I don't have a card for that one. Um, but today we're learning about God's family, which Paul talks about in the Book of Romans. Let's check out our lesson to find out more. Yeah, let's do that. The Apostle Paul prized his personal relationship with God. It was extraordinary to him that the Creator of the universe would step in and adopt him to be his very own son. And it was not because he had done anything to attract such favor, but simply because it pleased God and because of his tender mercies. As Paul wrote about adoption, his thoughts were for those who did not truly understand the Father's love. Imagine a young boy, penniless, rejected, without a name and without a future. He is a beggar and an inconvenience to a society who regards him as a street rat. While scavenging for food one day in a dark corner of a busy street, he turns to observe a beautiful family. All he has ever desired is to have a mom and a dad to love and protect him, maybe sisters and brothers to play with, and the chance for a bright future. But the dream moves on without even noticing. The young orphan continues his daily chore of searching out his next meal when he notices a well-dressed man approaching. This is clearly a man of great importance and power, and even in this prosperous community, he seems almost out of place. The boy hesitates for a moment, then turns to shrink into his corner. He takes two steps before he is stopped by the gentle hand of the stranger, who says kindly, I would like to adopt you to be my very own son. Surely I am dreaming, the beggar thinks to himself. He is overwhelmed by the proposal, almost doubting the offer is real. How could a poor boy like himself become a part of this distinguished man's family? But it's true, however unbelievable. And the man takes the boy before a judge and begins the legal process of making him a member of his great family. The boy is now treated as a son. His hair is cut and his face is clean. He has new clothes on. He sits at the father's table and before him a banquet of food to eat. This is too wonderful, unlike anything he has ever experienced. The entire process is complete and the boy becomes the proud son of honor with all the privileges of sonship. He is dressed in the finest linens and dines on the finest foods. He is at long last part of a family who loves him as their own. He is overwhelmed by the generosity and love of his new father, amazed by his own good fortune, and filled with joy and hope for a bright future. The celebration continues as family and friends come from all over to meet their new beloved family member. The lives of the family and the life of the young beggar are changed forever. It may have been a story like this that was on the Apostle's mind when he wrote of the glorious mystery of adoption, how a person completely unrelated to God and his perfect holiness could be chosen as a child to inherit his vast riches. Paul knew the love of a father who was also king and creator of the universe. He enjoyed the belonging that came from being a part of the family of God. The Apostle Paul's life had been forever changed and he urged his readers also to be changed by the truth of a perfect father's love. Hey Josh, I see what you meant by saying family was our topic for the day. All of us can be part of God's family when we choose to follow Jesus. That's right, and when we do that, we are adopted into God's family. 
Adoption is a word that means taking a child who wasn't a part of your family and making them a full member of your family. Even if a child isn't related by blood, when they're adopted by new parents, they become children of the family, just as much as the children born into that family. And when we're adopted into God's family, we become his children. That's our bottom line for today, isn't it? Adoption, I can be part of God's family. Let's all say it together. <laughs> Adoption, Adoption, I can, can be, be part, part of God's, God's family. family. And that's such great news. As his child, I know how much God loves me, and the best part is that everyone can be part of God's family if they choose to follow Jesus. It's a great big family of believers all around the world. That's right. So we have learned how Jesus justifies and redeems us from our sin, and he wants us to join his family. He wants a friendship with us, which we can have when we ask his forgiveness and choose to follow him. Once we do that, we are adopted into his family forever. So anyone who follows Jesus is justified, redeemed, and adopted into God's family. Isn't that incredible? It is. Let's stand and say our memory verse, which sums up what God has done for us. For the wages is of sin, sin is death, death but, but the, the gift, gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord. Romans 6.23 6, Let's say up. it once more, okay? Everybody, ready? For, For the, the wages, wages of sin is death, but, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 6, 23. Great job, everyone. You can have a seat now. Well, I'm going to give my sister a call right now. All this talk about family is making me miss her so much. Thanks for joining us today, everyone. See you next time. Bye.
world be a better place. But by thy mercy, by thy grace, kiss all our.